Hello everyone. On Friday, I went to the Star Wars movie. Um, that's not what I want to talk about uh, this time, though. Not, not the Star Wars movie. There's plenty of people that have uh, talked about it already. Uh, and I want to reserve my judgment on exactly what's going on in The Force Awakens until I've seen whatever it is uh, they're calling the one that comes after. Um, now, what I want to talk about was the actual movie-going experience. Now, uh, th this was a big 3D release and all of that jazz. But I didn't go to a 3D show. I have, for the past while, been actively avoiding 3D movie releases. I've been doing that for a couple of reasons. One, having to wear the 3D glasses, uh, the polarized glasses, uh, is unpleasant when you already wear glasses. Uh, they never quite fit right, so they don't quite um, separate the uh, two polarities of the light properly, so you get a little bit of bleed over between the eyes. Which, for the most part, isn't too big of a problem, but it is enough to make things a little bit less pleasant than it should be. And I think the people that develop this stuff, uh, I don't know that they actually test it uh, with people that wear glasses. You know, I, I really don't think they do. I could put up with the glasses, though, uh, if the production was better on these movies. The, the problem... Uh, on a lot of them is it's too gimmicky still. Uh, instead of treating the movie screen as a window onto the action, they have things popping out of the screen at you coming two inches from your face. Now the problem with doing that is it causes intense eye strain. The reason for that is you have to focus at the distance of the screen. Your eyes have to focus at the screen distance for everything to be sharp. And when, when th and that means they have to converge at that distance as well. They're going to converge at that distance naturally. Now, the further off the proper convergence angle uh, for what you're looking at, the more you're fighting the natural instincts uh, that you've developed from walking around in the three-dimensional real world. So the closer things come to your eyes, to see it clearly, the more your eyes would naturally cross. So generally, when you're looking at something, the more your eyes are crossing to look at it, the closer it is. And vice versa. So when you have something jumping out of the screen, a screen which is 30 feet away from you, yet it's, it appears right here, right in front of you, it's close enough where you feel like you should be crossing your eyes, but you've got to focus at the distance. Uh... So what, what happens, at least for me, is sort of a fight sets up. My eyes want to cross to see it. Then it goes out of focus, so my eyes uncross. And you kind of get that vibration effect and this eye strain. And it's just uh, not pleasant. So, and that's just leaving aside the fact that things jumping out of the screen at you is just bloody rude. Uh, you know, and it generally is just a gimmick added on, and it doesn't add anything to the experience. And then, aside from that, a lot of these 3D releases are just a 2D film that's been processed to add some depth between various elements. So that means the various elements are still two-dimensional. 
but they're at different distances. So it's not really three-dimensional. It's kind of two-and-a-half-dimensional. Now, uh, I have to admit that if they set the, uh, the 3D window so that the uh, action takes place behind the screen instead of in front of it, uh, it's not so bad. Or if they at least keep it a fair distance in front of you. But anyway, uh, a properly done film that's done in proper 3D, filmed in 3D, using the screen as a window on the action, instead of having the action take place in front of the screen, that doesn't seem to bother me near so much. But it does have a caveat. You can't be using the two-dimensional filmmaking techniques that directors are all familiar with. The uh, critical techniques that don't work well in 3D are focus pulls. That's where you start out with one thing in focus and then you shift the focus to what you want people to look at. That does not work in 3D. And the other is uh, minimal depth of fields where the foreground and background are out of focus. If you're looking at a 3D scene, that's not what you expect to see. You expect everything to be in focus, uh, or at least clear. So, you, so no, no matter what you look at in the scene, it's in focus. Uh, and both of these... Now, the latter is harder to do because that requires uh, depth of field, which tends to require a huge amount of light, and it, it, it's, it's hard to get. Hard to get. Um, so I can give that one a little bit of a pass on live action. But there is no excuse for it in animation. Because you can render everything perfectly sharp in animation. So anyway, that's the reason I avoid the 3D shows. I find the 2D experience is, on average, just a little bit better. Now... With the Star Wars movie, the local theater, uh, Landmark Cinemas, uh, they were doing something different. So I went to a 2D show there, but this 2D show had, has recliner seats. Now I thought, recliner seats, that's different. So it turns out what they're doing is they're converting the whole place to so have these rec this recliner seating, which is... Assigned seating, so when you buy your ticket, you pick your, your seat. They're charging the same price for admission that they were charging before, so they're not jacking up rates. Now, what this does is, what they're doing is, they're cutting the seating capacity by about 60%. So you've got wider seats, you've got the recliner, so it has to have space in front of it for a footrest and everything. And then you've got, so you've got a wider uh, aisle between the seats or, or uh, you know so you've got some leg room uh, so the seats are wider the arms are wider so there's actually room where you can put two people side by side they can both have their arms on the armrest isn't that novel anyway and they're also electric so you know the reclining action's electric uh, which is kind of nice now I think uh, paradoxically, I think that'll stand up better uh, to the abuse uh, because you're not going to have people trying to figure out how to recline it. You know, you just push a button and it just goes in the right. Uh, now, even better, the amount it reclines is adjustable. So if you want to be laying on your, you know, almost on your back, you can, you know, go back further or you can go back less depending on angles and what's comfortable for you. So, you know, that works kind of nicely. So this was a smaller screen uh, in the auditorium. But with the recliner seating, and it's a nice padded chair, you know, like it's a recliner. And, uh, you know, granted, it's a row recliner, you know, so the people moving in the seat next to you, if they're shifting around, it's going to translate. But you know what? That's not that bad, considering that the chair is a lot more comfortable than a standard theater seat. 
so this uh, it's a new thing at this theater, and they haven't quite they haven't converted everything yet. Um, it just so happened I bought my ticket a couple days before uh, Star Wars, and they had seats for the 11 p.m. show on Friday. And I thought, okay, hey, I'll try this out. So I got my seat, you know, got my ticket and everything. I went there, I bought my popcorn, I went in, I sat down, I worked out how the seat worked because I wasn't sure. It took me a moment to figure out how the reclining action worked to find the uh, gimmick that did it. But then when I did, uh, I'm going, hey, this is cool, man. And you know what? Uh, even, even with a smaller screen, I, I think the experience was better than it would have been in, in the Ultra AVX at Cineplex. Uh, the comfort factor is amazing. Now, I might be able to deal with the 3D better in these recliner things than I, I would with a typical uh, theater seat. And that's just because the comfort, I can, I didn't get to the point, you know, an hour in where my butt hurt and I had to shift around and I'm squirming around. And so I'd be able to actually set the 3D glasses, you know, get them lined up with my glasses lean back in the recliner with my head back and gravity holding the glasses in place. I think the 3D would be easier to deal with. But even without the 3D, I think the experience with the recliner seats was vastly superior to a typical movie theater with the with a, a 3D show. Uh, I I really do believe that. Now, I'm kind of hoping that uh, Landmark's experiment pays off because, uh, you know, I quite enjoyed the experience. And it pretty much eliminates the motivation to go to the, the, the Cineplex Theater that's a little further away by se some miles to get a more comfortable experience. Because their they their experience, you know, their seats rocked a bit, and, you know, that sort of thing. And uh, if you if I got my ticket soon enough, there's a couple of perfect seats in there where you can put your feet up on a railing or something like that. But the landmark cinemas, they had narrow, slightly narrower seats, slightly narrower aisles, and all of that is an older theater. So they're they, they're renovating it, and updating it, and all of that, and. So far, the results are quite good. I quite like them. Uh, so it's the closest theater to my place. And I think now I'm probably going to go there instead of Cineplex. Uh, and I don't expect Cineplex to uh, add, you know, to change their... Uh, their um, uh, the way they're doing things, you know, overnight or, or, or anything like that. Actually, I expect uh, Cineplex and everybody else to watch Landmark's experiment and see how it does. Now, you might think reducing seating capacity by 60% uh, and not raising prices to compensate is, is a bad decision. But when you consider the vast majority of showings of most movies are not a full house, so, realistically, uh, while they might be foregoing some revenue on opening nights and so on uh, for the big blockbusters, on average, uh, you know, most showings, they're going to be closer to capacity. But their revenue is not going to change because there's still going to be the same number of people. They'll just be just the, the, there'll be a larger percentage of the total capacity. Uh, but even for the big blockbuster ones, uh, well, maybe instead of uh, having uh, three shows, you know, they, they have a couple of later ones. They, they, 
uh, or the people coming to that theater will come three days later. Um, it spread out the crowd. Now, there's another thing that uh, w makes a difference as well. It reduces the insane rush on the concession stand. It spreads the crowd out a bit because you've got 60, potentially 60% 60 fewer people to deal with for crowd control. So that might actually reduce their staffing costs too. So maybe they end up with a net gain financially. Uh, either way, I'm hoping it works out for them because uh, so far, I think they're onto something. Uh, I'm going to have to give it a few more uh, movie visits just to be, uh, just, just to um, be sure that it really is as good as I think it is. Uh, you know, and it's not just a, ooh, shiny effect. Um, but I had the same uh, uh, reaction with Ultra AVX, and it did turn out to be, on average, better. So, uh, they're combining the assigned seating that AVX has with comfortable seating, and I think it's a net win. So, you know, I'm kind of hoping that they continue to have their 2D showings of uh, 3D movies because uh, even Cineplex is doing that. There are people that cannot watch 3D that don't get the 3D effect anyway. Uh, there's some people that makes them ill. So, you know, having 2D showings is a good idea. Um, but, see, there's another advantage to going to a 2D show. You don't pay the 3D premium. Uh, so... Uh, I'm not doing that to save money going to a movie, but it is a factor. You know, it saves me a few dollars every time I go to the movie. But anyway, uh, so Landmark is having this new recliner seating thing, and I think they're onto something. Uh, if there's a Landmark cinema near you that's also doing it, give it a shot. Uh, even if they have smaller screens or whatever, uh, give it a shot. Uh, you know, try it out. Uh, I, I think you'll probably be pleasantly surprised, uh, or at the very least, comfortable. And, you know, the more people that check it out, I think the better their uh, net result's going to be, obviously. Uh, so... Hey, uh, it's nice to see they're trying something new. And uh, in this case, it's something that I think is going to be a net win for the moviegoers. So, hey, excellent. Um, anyway, uh, that's pretty much it for my uh, commentary on uh, movies. Uh, 3D movies suck. Recliner seats in the movie theater seem like a good idea. That's all for this time. Thanks for watching.